what's going on everyone uh we're gonna go over the nasdaq futures markets just opened up here on sunday um i want to look at some levels that we need to kind of pay attention to going into this week now what i've got here is a 15 minute time frame because i was just kind of looking at the price action as we opened up here on this you know uh sunday afternoon again what i'm going to do here is i'm going to pull up this daily time frame now we could in fact be getting ready for a little bit of a pullback however one thing that i want to make very 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 clear is that you have to respect the nature of the beast so just because it feels like the market should pull back doesn't mean the market needs to pull back just because it feels like the market needs to come down doesn't mean the market needs to come down so <clears throat> as day traders we have the luxury of trading both long and short i know a lot of you traders out there like to kind of predetermine where you want to trade for the day and you kind of stick to that bias and you know can either do yourself harm or do yourself well but if you look at what's been going on for the past couple of months now you know almost three months you know the market has been moving extremely orderly you get a big move up consolidation slight pullback next leg higher pullback consolidation slight leg higher so it's operating in a very very orderly kind of wave right notice the wave that we've got going on here we haven't really had a deep pullback here we haven't really tested the 50-day moving average we haven't lost a 50-day moving average so you know the rule of thumb is always as stands over the 50-day moving average stocks are generally more bullish so you want to be trading and focusing more energy towards the long side on the pullbacks you want to be buying those dips onto rising support and once you're below the 50-day moving average you want to be shorting the pops at supply so just kind of looking at where we're at right now on the chart you can notice here if i pull up this this date here this january 24th this high that we put in of 17,793 is around 80 points away from where we opened up today on sunday the 4th what i'm looking at here is if we do start to confirm this high from january the 24th we're going to have room into top supply at 17,935 9 let's call it 17,990s. That's going to be your upper Bollinger Band as well as this upper channel here at the linear regression. Now, if we do start to take out Friday's highs, look for that long position, take the scalp, get in, get green, just get out, shut your computer screens down. Again, another note that I kind of want to, you know, pass on to you guys is that, you know, if you're a trader, if you're a scalper and you manage to, you know, make a few bucks early in the morning, shut it down, guys. I don't know how many times I see traders, you know, take two or three trades in the morning. They have a positive P&L and, you know, it's four hours have passed and they're still sitting there trading and they've given away all their profits and now they're they're negative. You know, having a strategy, having an edge is is just that it's a slight edge, guys. It's it's, you know, strategies are like are like opinions. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. OK, so what that means is that you know you're not always going to be right and the, the more trades you take the more opportunity that you're opening yourself up to lose money and that's just a simple harsh reality um you know trading i like to tell my traders inside of evolution traders we trade for the freedom of time um and what that means is you know if we're able to identify a good setup that aligns with our risk that aligns with you know the style and, and, the, and the strategy that we trade we take the trade and if we make some money we stop because even though we can make money very very quickly we're still in the business of long term because if i'm not able to have money or capital to trade a year from now what good is trading it's it means nothing to me if i have no money to trade three four or five years from now what good is the skill set it's not any good so for me i still always need to think long term i need to think down the road i need to make sure that i'm, I'm keeping the lights on and able to still stay in business and the one way that you can stay in business is by controlling risk it's by not over leveraging yourself again i know for a lot of you guys who trade prop firms it's very very easy to kind of go for that you know shiny object and and try to you know make ten thousand dollars in a day or in a month and try to put on you know 
monster trades in in strike gold but i focus on small size getting green stopping if i do manage to you know take a couple of hits and i have to you know end the day down i am going to follow my daily loss limit and my daily loss limit has nothing to do with my total overall drawdown that the prop firm gives me before they liquidate my account so let's say, for example, if I'm trading one of my $50,000 accounts and I have a $2,000 drawdown, $2,500 drawdown, there's no way in hell, there's no shot in hell that I'm going to lose that one account in one day. There's no shot in hell. If you are trading and you blow up an account in one day, that's not a market problem. That's not a strategy problem. That, my friends, is a you problem. And until you master yourself, and you wake up one day and you slap yourself in the face and you tell yourself, you know, stop being an idiot and actually allow yourself to get good at this skill set is the day where you're going to see much more success. So, you know, back to the point, if I have a $50,000 account and $2,000 drawdown, I'm probably not going to lose no more than $250 max on the day. Why? Because I want to reset myself if I do. If I take a few bad trades or, I, you know, I get go outside my rules or hell, the market, you know, confirms something that aligns with my strategy and it just doesn't work out. Like how many times have you seen a perfect setup where you take the trade, everything looks great, and then it comes to wick you out and stops you out? Like how many times has that happened to all of us? Um, you know, if, depending on how long you've been trading, you know, but it's happened to me hundreds and hundreds of times. And that's just the nature of the of the game. And that's just the way that it's going to go. But if I sit there and I get salty and I get pissed off and I try to revenge trade and make it all back, who am I doing a disservice to? You know, nobody but myself. I'm, I'm only hurting myself when I do that. So be an adult. Put your big boy pants on and stop being a baby. Because many of you guys, and, and this is this is honestly meant to kind of get under your skin but you are soft, you are soft human beings. You're soft when it comes to, you don't wanna be wrong, you don't believe it, it's gotta be the strategy, it's gotta be the indicator, it's gotta be the market makers, it's gotta be this, that, and the other. You wanna believe that tra that you're so good at trading that this you've learned something so complex. Guys, I know people that trade the most simplest strategy with exceptional risk management. Like for example, I know someone who's not even on social media who makes a great living trading futures. They actually trade commodities and they trade a one minute time frame and they trade the opening one minute range. They let the one minute candle put in a range. It confirms the top of the range. They they take that for a scalp long. They confirm the bottom of the range. They take that for a scalp short. If it, if it breaks back over the opening range, they get the hell out. Now, mind you, they play with large size, so they don't need to capture a lot of, you know, a lot of points on the move, and they're able to get in, kind of scalp that quick move and get out. The point is, is that that has nothing to do with market structure, liquidity, this, that, and the other, order blocks, all this crazy bullshit that everyone is always, you know, entangled into. It just basically has to do with how much do I want to risk? Does this, is this presenting an opportunity for me to, to go long or short? And let me trust this enough to, you know, follow my risk management and take the trade. I know what I want as far as, you know, points profit or ticks from profit, whatever the case may be. Everyone's got a different way to trade. It all comes down and boils down to what exactly is going to work for you. So again, let's just kind of clear things up. If we do start to lose a five and 10 day moving average on a daily time frame, we're going to have room into rising support down here at 17,334. That's going to provide a lot of opportunity for you to make money to the short side. If we do start to confirm Friday's highs, we do have room up to 17,793 and 17,007 or 17,009. Uh, 90. So again, from 17,793 all the way up here to around 18,000, let's call it. That'll be your range if we start to confirm Friday's highs. Again, if we start to confirm Friday's lows below the five and 10 day, I just gave you the guys that level there down into 17,300. Uh, so definitely want to kind of, you know, keep an open mind. Um, again, even though the market looks like it, it needs a little bit of a rest, it doesn't have to rest. Uh, definitely want to stay with wherever the price action is going. We don't want to try to be some type of hero and try to predict where the price action is going. Again, find the time frame that suits your personality. Find the amount of contracts that suits your type of risk appetite. 
and then just stick to that each and every single day and don't deviate from that. Make sure you're journaling your trades as well as your emotions and then back testing each and every single day at the end of the day. And I can almost guarantee you that over the course of three months, six months, 12 months, you're gonna be a much better, calmer trader who's on the road to consistency. Guys, if you would like to trade with me each and every single day live, make sure to join Evolution Traders. That link is down in the description box below. I go over a bunch of different lessons, courses. I have um, a community in there with awesome traders who are all doing and working towards the same common goal, along with one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentorship that you guys can take advantage of. And I'll see you guys on the inside. For those of you guys on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And the best of luck this week. I wish you guys all a lot of cash.